Hello YouTube. So I'm going to do a review of my Enduro e-bike. Uh, I put a little bit over 400 miles on it. I was going to wait till I hit a thousand, but I think 400 miles is enough to kind of get an idea how these parts all work together. Uh, so what I'm going to do, you know, I'll go through each one of the parts I used and, uh, you know, what they cost. And I'll run a total somewhere on the screen. We'll get an idea what this total build cost. Starting in the front, I used these Zoom forks. These are pretty common. Low budget. You know, they run $100. I don't know how many bad things you can say about them at $100. But, uh, you know, I, I can say on the street, smooth dirt roads, I think they're okay. They'll get you going. They'll get you started. And you can always upgrade later. I mean, the next step up, I, I think, would be the DNMs, you know, at $400. Um, but these are okay. You know, the, the downside is, you know, they make noise. They, they Especially over, like, washboard surfaces. Um, they'll they'll just start tapping. They'll, they they make this tapping noise. You know they're topping out basically, and they just make other kind of noises here and there. You know they're just kind of annoying. But other than that, I think they're okay, and you know they'll get you down the road. Something to use until you upgrade if you want to go that way. On to the front wheel. You know actually I got the front wheel, the rear wheel with the motor, um, the controller, the screen, and the, the, they give you a wiring harness and a throttle. And that was all $900. Um, as far as the rims go, I don't have anything bad to say about them at all. I like them. I, they're quality. I mean, I got them from N-Cycle. Um, and I want to give them a shout out. You know, when I bought this kit, um, they did the haul test in China before they shipped it. I didn't have to do anything. It was completely plug and play. I've never even touched any of the uh, parameters or settings in the controller at all. I plugged it in, went 64 miles an hour. I mean, that, that was pretty much it. But, um, yeah, the wheels, you know, going back to the wheels, I, I don't have anything bad to say about them. Um, other than the fact that 19-inch motorcycle wheels in general are very difficult to find tires for. I was going to do like a supermoto theme on this thing, but I decided I was going to go off-road, and I kind of threw that out the window. I found these Shinco 241s, which I, they work perfectly on this uh, for me, um, street and dirt. Uh, they run 35 bucks a piece, and then you need tubes for another $10 a piece. Uh, the front rim has the option to run dual disc. Okay, the, the frame, that was $250. And, uh, you know, as far as the frame goes, you know, as far as the, the positives go, I just, for some reason, I like the way this frame looks. It's just got this kind of industrial look to it. I like the look of it better than the other frames that are out on the market. Um, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, it does have a few downsides though, you know, and, and, uh, let me, uh, I'm going to pull the side cover off here. Give me one second. Okay. So what I wanted to show you is it's just very tight in here. You know, you, you try to work on it, try to get a screwdriver in there. It, it, it's just a pain. You know, part of the reason is I have this controller mounted in here. Um, you know, if you mounted it outside, maybe it'd give you a little bit more room in here. Um, if you do mount it outside, it's too tall for this cover. So you either, you know, make brackets for the cover or don't run it. But, you know, there's other frames on the market where they have removable panels. And I, I think that would be really helpful when, you, when you're working on the thing. And, you know, the other downside to the frame is, is it's heavy. I mean, I think this is the heaviest one as far as this design goes. Um, I found one other downside uh, kind of with the design. But this is, this is my fault, you know, partially my fault anyway. Um, I had this shock adjusted, this collar all the way up to get the ride height as low as possible. And um, I didn't have the dampening adjusted right. And I took it out off-road and hammered it. And uh, basically what happened is it bottomed out. It ended up pushing this bracket here back, you know, down into the swing arm. And this swing arm's hollow. And that's kind of a, you know, weakness. And it's, it's starting to crack a little bit back here. Um, I think if they would have welded this bracket on top of this solid steel right here, I don't think it would have done that. I think it would have been okay. And like I said, this is, you know, partially my fault. I'm no stranger to this. You know, I broke my YZ frame. I broke my Raptor frame, my Raptor quad frame, you know, up by the steering stem. I had to have that welded. So it's not really a big deal to me. All I'm going to do is tap this bracket back straight and then we'll run a bead across here. And, and call it a day. And maybe later on when the straight frame is stripped down, do something else. So all in all, you know, I'm not going to really fault this frame. This thing's $250 including shipping. Your next step up is going to be five to $600. Um, I, still, I still think it's okay. 
Um, the uh, rear shock here, this is just standard DNM. The frame calls for a 190 millimeter shock. I think you probably could have gone with a 200, um, maybe even a 210, you know, taken into account for the sag. And I think the spring rate uh, is, is a little bit light. Um, I got a 550 pound one on here. It's pretty soft though. Um, my, that might need to step up a little bit on that. And that, you know, another, another contributing factor to that issue right there. For the motor, QS205, three and a half turn. No complaints whatsoever. Um, I, I wouldn't change that at this point. Um, I cruise, uh, you know, 50, 55 miles an hour, you know, all day, no problem. All my street, my, you know, this, the posted speed limits around here are around 50 miles an hour, so it works perfectly for me. Um, you know, you get blasts up to 64. I think, you know, the, the jury's still out in the top speed of this thing. I think it's a little bit faster than that. I'm going to, I'm going to do another, I'm going to do some more testing on that. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, it has plenty of torque for me. Um, I think the five turn might be a little more fun, you know, bring the front end up a little bit easier. Um, but you know, you're going to lose a little bit of the top speed, but, uh, all in all, I'm happy with the motor. Okay. So the cranks, these are 152 millimeter, just basic generic cranks. Um, they were 40 bucks. They came with a, they come with a chain ring. You can choose what kind of, you know, what, how many teeth you want on it. Um, this one that I have on here, I bought separately as a 38 tooth. Um, and then I'm running a 23, uh, freewheel on the back. You can pedal up to about 10 miles an hour. It's easy to pedal, just a little bit on the slow side, but I, I like it. I'm going to leave it. And then I got a chain tensioner, um, $15 and the freewheel, I'll, I'll say $10 on that. And the pedals, I got DMR bike V8 pedals. They're 50 bucks. Love them. Nothing bad to say about them at all. Uh, the chain, 20 bucks, just a basic chain. Um, let's see. And we'll move on to the, move on to the handlebars. These are DMR wing bars. Now I spent a little bit of money here. These are like 70 bucks. You can use those wake bars if you want on AliExpress and get like 15 bucks and the wake stem to go with it. Another 15 bucks, but. I use the DMR stem and uh, it's a like a downhill um, downhill uh, mountain bike stem. It's really short. It brings the bars back up to you. Um, I like the seating position it gives you. Very happy with the stem. I just like DMR bike stuff. It's quality. Um, it, it, it's, it's a little bit more money, but, but uh, it, it's really all high quality stuff, the fit and finish of it. So the seat, seat post and clamp, it's about 50 bucks. Um, I guess the seat could have used a little bit more padding. You know, it's a little bit, a little bit thin, but it's okay. Moving on to the screen, um, that all came, you know, that came with the kit. No complaints on the electronics at all. I mean, you you, you turn this thing on, it works every time. I've never had any issues with the electronics on this thing. Um, there, the moving on to the controller again. You know, all plug and play. The only thing I did is I cut the rails off the side of it, so it was a little narrower to fit in here. Um, didn't really do anything to it. It's a Sabaton one, 150 amp. And as far as the brakes go, these XOD brakes, um, they're $58. That's front and rear. And then the discs are $10 a piece. Um, you know, these brakes, I hated them when I first got them, you know, and, and it's partially because, you know, I basically burned them up, you know, slowing this thing down from 60 miles an hour. So, you know, it was my fault, but they were, they were noisy and they did stop well. Um, I want to upgrade to some Magura MT5Es, you know, which I'm still looking at. You know, they're, you know, these, these brakes here are $58. The Maguras, by the time you get the disc, you're going to be close to 400 So what I did in the meantime, I, I was kind of worried about hitting metal to metal on the pads. So I went ahead and just bought new pads for 12 bucks on Amazon, these uh, semi-metallics and... I'm telling you, they changed everything with these brakes. Um, they're quiet. They stop. I mean, they have enough power to lock up the tire. It's not like they don't. You can lock up that rear wheel, and you could you could probably flip over the handlebars in the front here. You know, they have enough power to do that in that way. So, you know, changing the pads, putting the $12 pads in, made these brakes a little bit tolerable for now. So I think they're okay to get you going. You know, and, and uh, get you started and then upgrade later, kind of like the forks. Got the headlight. Um, you know, I, I kind of, 
I like it. it it's ten dollars. You can't really complain too much about it, but I think it maybe it, it could be brighter. I'll just put it that way. Uh, the tail light, the tail light's awesome. No complaints at all on the tail light. Um, it has wiring for a brake light. I don't have that wired up. I just have it as a light right now. Um, and it, the uh, the headlight came with the switch here, uh, so that that was included. The battery, you know, I did not want to build one. Um, you know, I was looking to buy one. I, I couldn't find one with enough power and and you know and be able to fit inside this frame. So you know, I just uh, I started out by you know I bought some cells. I got a hold of some counterfeit counterfeit Samsungs at first, but I ended up with these Molly cells, uh, twenty eight hundred. Um, uh, Ma, and then uh, and then 35 amps. Um, real happy with them. I mean, no issues. Uh, you know, once I had all the cells, they were they were 1,200 for the 240 cells I needed, and then the BMS was 70. Miscellaneous shrink wrap, uh, copper, and and the .20 nickel, uh, 100 dollars for that, and maybe another 50 bucks in miscellaneous, you know, leads and connectors. Um, and that, that's pretty much it on the battery, um, range, uh, 30 to 40 miles an hour with some blasts up over 60, a couple of blasts up over 60 miles an hour. Um, I went 42 miles like that. I don't know, you know, what it would be just holding it at 30. It's kind of difficult to, to go slow on this thing, but, uh, but it, it, you could probably get some more range out of it. I kind of, I kind of abused it charger um i paid a hundred dollars for it i think they went up a little bit um i think they're 110 now uh, adjustable adjustable amp all the way up to 12 amps no issues with it works great uh all right guys so that's my review i'll do a uh i'll do a like a follow-up at about a thousand miles to see how everything's holding up i appreciate you guys watching and uh, i'll see you next video